Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Adam Burke from BangTheBook.com coming to you with my Tuesday three pack video here for January 22nd. My three favorite plays of the night one from college basketball, two from the NHL here for this Tuesday three pack. Before I get into that, over at BangTheBook.com, phenomenal work being done by our cast of writers over there. Of course, you already know about Kyle Hunter's daily college basketball picks. Another 2 0 night last night. You want to make sure every single day that you're going and checking out that fine piece over at bangthebook.com. Also, Parker Michaels' NHL picks. He'll get a little bit of a break here for the All-Star break. I'm sure he needs that, but we're having a very good season so far, giving out phenomenal information. You can find that every day over at bangthebook.com as well. Good edition of Bang the Book Radio today. Chatted with Brian Blessing and Rolf Michaels. Gave some initial thoughts on Super Bowl 53. Talked a little bit of horse racing, some golf, and also college basketball as we continued our conference breakdowns with the Big East and the Horizon League. So definitely want to make sure you check that out. The nice thing is, while you're right here on our YouTube page, you can see both of those segments carried over from Spreaker. You can also find us on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, you name it, you can find Bang the Book Radio there. All right, let's go ahead and dig into this Tuesday three-pack here. We'll start on the college basketball side of things with our highlight game for the Tuesday three-pack. That is Mississippi State on the road taking on the Kentucky Wildcats. Wildcats seven-point favorite, total 144.5 for this game. And one of the things I've been talking about here, both on Bang the Book Radio and in my videos a little bit, is that, you know, we don't have the NFL really anymore. We've got one more game left. Obviously a lot to consider for that game, but it's not a day after day after day handicap for a lot of people anymore. And college football has been done for a while. So a lot of people diving into the college basketball betting market. And as they look at this game here tonight, see a proven commodity in Kentucky against something of an upstart in Mississippi State. You've got to think the public enamored with Kentucky tonight. You look at consensus percentages out there, that definitely is the case for the Wildcats this evening. But I'm looking to go the other way here. I like Mississippi State a little bit in this game tonight. Now, obviously, it's going to be a tough game there in Lexington for Ben Holland and the Bulldogs. But Kentucky's had some problems this year with teams that shoot a lot of three-pointers. I think for Mississippi State tonight, that will be a big focal point of their game. Look, this is a boom or bust play. If they make their shots, they should cover the number. If they don't, there's a chance they get blown out in this game tonight. So keep that in mind, but I'm confident that Mississippi State will be able to shoot the basketball well. They're 23rd in effective field goal percentage here on the season, 28th in three-point percentage shooting. That's national ranks for those two stats there. Kentucky does defend the interior pretty well, but they're 289th in the country defending out on the perimeter with those three-point shots. So Kentucky has had some issues against jump shooting teams here, as I mentioned already. Mississippi State will look to do that a lot here tonight. And this Mississippi State offense has been trending up here a little bit of late. Very good efficiency metrics over their last 10 games. Uh, scoring about 1.2 points per possession based on the adjusted metrics over at Bart Torvik's website. So this is a Mississippi State team that's getting better offensively. They're making more shots. And that makes them a very dangerous road team here tonight at Rupp Arena. And for Kentucky here, you know, 337th in the country in three-point percentage rate. So they don't take a whole lot of three-pointers. So if Mississippi State getting three for every two that Kentucky gets, good chance that Mississippi State does hang around here in this game. Also, not a great spot for Kentucky here tonight. They took on Auburn over the weekend. Won that game on the road. Very big SEC victory for them. They've got Kansas on deck in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. So it's a little bit of a sandwich spot here against the Mississippi State team that commands respect this season, but over the last several years really hasn't. So there is a chance that Kentucky does overlook this game a little bit tonight. As a result, I do like Mississippi State some in the first half plus four, but to make things easy here for everybody so that they all have access, Mississippi State plus seven is the play here tonight in college basketball. Transition over to the NHL side of things here. Only a couple more days left of games before the All-Star break begins on Thursday. Looking at game 019-020, San Jose takes on Washington tonight. Washington in the minus 135 range for this one, total of 6.5. 
The Sharks will be without Eric Carlson again, but this is a pretty important game for San Jose. They're looking to avoid an offer on this road trip. You do not want that going into the All-Star break. A lot of teams, in fact, I believe it's 21 teams next week, don't play until Friday. So you lose this last game before the break, it has to sit, it has to fester for a very, very long time. So I think San Jose here tonight comes forward with a really big effort, wants to get that win, wants to go into the break with some positive feelings. Washington, on the other hand, who just gave up eight goals to Chicago over the weekend, plays in Toronto tomorrow night against the Maple Leafs. So they will wrap up their pre-All-Star break play with a very, very big game in the Eastern Conference tomorrow night. So maybe a little bit of a look-ahead factor there for the Capitals in that one. And really overall, you look at San Jose this season, if they were getting any kind of goaltending, they would be in so much better of a spot. Sharks should be plus 25 in goal in goal differential at 5-on-5. Five five. They're plus 25 in expected goal differential 5-on-5. Five five. But they're actually plus 9 in that department because they have not gotten very good goaltending from Aaron Dell or Martin Jones. Jones pulled in last night's game for the Sharks. This is a back-to-back for San Jose, so I know that's a little bit of a concern for some people out there, but because they played so poorly, because they really mailed it in there in the third period, I think this is a good bounce-back spot for San Jose. The Capitals, on the other hand, a team that should be in line for regression, particularly at even strength. Uh, You look at them right now, four straight losses, so maybe some of that regression has hit here, but they are 28th in expected goal differential at 5-on-5, five five, but they're actually 6th in actual goal differential, 5-on-5. Five five. So this is a capital team that's been very, very fortunate so far here this season. Their regression may be hitting a little bit for them. Tough spot with that game in Toronto tomorrow night. So I do like San Jose. They're 0-1-9 by rotation order tonight. You can get them in the plus-125 range. Do like them this evening against the Washington Capitals. One more game here, and as I said, this one comes from the ice as well. Game 023024, the New York Islanders in the Windy City to take on the Chicago Blackhawks. Islanders minus 140 favorite. Total of six for this one here. You know, the Islanders lead the Metropolitan Division with 62 points. They've rattled off five straight, eight of their last ten. Barry Trotz doing a fantastic job with this Islanders team. This is an Islanders team that, you know, they needed some goaltending help last year, but also did not play particularly well defensively. That has changed this season. They've been very good in their own zone. Back-to-back shutouts for the Islanders. Five straight games allowing one or one goal or less here. So, you know, the Islanders playing very, very well defensively. And you look at the Blackhawks, a lot of overs for them, a lot of high-scoring games. They're not getting a whole lot in the form of goaltending, and especially from Cam Ward, who gets the nod tonight for Chicago. 399 goals against average, 884 save percentage. Arguably the worst semi-regular goalie in the NHL here so far this season. And for the Blackhawks, you know, things have gotten a little bit better under Jeremy Colleton. But Joel Quenville getting fired, the window slamming shut for this team, the aging core just not getting it done anymore. I've got to think they're looking forward to some time away from the rink, looking forward to this All-Star break. Of course, they will have some guys going to the All-Star game, but I think the Islanders... Much more focused tonight. They are clearly the better team. Huge advantage in net. Doesn't matter if it's Robin Leonard or Thomas Grice. You know, when you've got a tandem situation like the Islanders have, both of those guys pushing each other to be better. Uh, You know, back-to-back shutouts, as I mentioned already. So, I think the Islanders have a big advantage here tonight. I'll take them minus the 140 in Chicago against the Blackhawks. So, my Tuesday three-pack plays here for January 22nd. Mississippi State plus seven in college basketball. Maybe we see a seven and a half at some of the public books that are out there. So you can keep an eye out for that. I don't think this is a game you have to fire on all that quickly. But do like them plus the seven. If you can get seven and a half, that's fantastic. San Jose Sharks in the plus 125 range. And finally, the New York Islanders in the minus 140 range. I'm Adam Burke from bangthebook.com.